All right, we're going to take a look at work, forces, and motions. All right, so what do we need to know? We start off with some terms here. Okay, the first one is velocity. So velocity is equivalent to a specification of its speed and direction of motion. Okay, so when you hear that for the first time, it sounds like gibberish probably, right? But what it means is that velocity, you need to know speed and you need to know direction, right? So the speed would be 60 miles an hour in this example, and a direction would be north, right? So the directions would be either north, south, east, or west. Speed, and we don't care about direction if we're just looking at speed, so then it would just be 60 miles an hour, but not 60 miles an hour north. Okay, we have acceleration and momentum. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity of an object with respect to time. An object acceleration is the net result of any and all forces acting on the object. Okay, so with acceleration, what we have written here is exactly what you want to be thinking. Just remember that it's the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. But really thinking rate of change of velocity. That's the key. Momentum can be defined as mass and motion. All objects have mass, so if an object is moving, then it has momentum. The amount of momentum that an object has is dependent on two variables, how much stuff is moving and how fast the stuff is moving. Therefore, momentum depends on the variable's mass and velocity. In terms of an equation, the momentum of an object is equal to the mass of the object times the velocity of the object. Okay, so we've got to know that. Mass is velocity. Momentum is mass times velocity. Okay, we have two more terms to go over. Okay, so we have work and force. So look at work first, right? So in terms of physics, work is force times distance. Okay, so a force is said to do work if, when acting, there's a displacement of the point of application in the direction of the force. Okay, this is why people get confused in physics, because you have sentences that sound like that, right? So um, let's go over what that actually means. So if we have the example where a ball is held above the ground and then dropped, the work done on the ball as it falls is equal to the weight of the ball, and so that's a force, right? multiplied by the distance to the ground, and that's the displacement. Okay, so whenever you hear the word, the idea of displacement, you're thinking that means distance. Work transfers energy from one place to another or one form to another. And we also have force. In physics, a force is any interaction that, when unopposed, will change the motion of an object. A force can cause an object with mass to change its velocity, Force can also be described intuitively as a push or a pull. A force will have both magnitude and direction. All right, so this leads us to Newton's three laws. So with Newton's three laws, we want to know the basics. We don't want to get caught up in all the details. That gets extremely complicated and need a lot of advanced scientific knowledge to be able to understand all of it. So here's what we need to know. Let's go over each of them. Newton's first law states that if the net force is zero, then the velocity of the object is constant. Velocity expresses both the object's speed and the direction of its motion, so we just went over that. Therefore, the statement that the object's velocity is constant is a statement that both its speed and the direction of its motion are constant. Okay, so we should still feel good about that. Therefore, an object at rest will stay at rest unless a force acts upon it. Also, an object that is in motion will not change its velocity unless a force acts upon it. Okay, so objects will stay at rest unless a force acts upon it. That's our first law. and has to do with velocity, right? Newton's second law states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force applied. And this change in momentum takes place in the direction of the applied force. Okay, so remember in second law we're thinking momentum, and change of momentum is proportional to the force applied. Okay, so the first law was more about velocity, this one's about momentum. Newton's third law means that all forces are interactions 
between different bodies, and so there's no such thing as a force that is not accompanied by an equal and opposite force. When he's talking about that equal and opposite force, what he's talking about is friction. So let's look at this. From a conceptual standpoint, Newton's third law is seen when a person walks. They push against the floor, and the floor pushes against that person. Similarly, the tires of a car push against the road while simultaneously push back against each other. In swimming, a person interacts with the water, pushing the water backward, while the wa water simultaneously pushes the person forward. Both the person and the water push against each other. The reaction forces account for the motion in these examples. These forces depend on friction, which is what we just said. A person on car or car on ice, for example, may be unable to exert the action force to produce the needed reaction force. Okay, so there's our three laws. Last thing here is the drop ball question. So this is a pretty common question, one that you're likely to see and would like to be ready for. And so the basic question is if we drop two balls of different weights, so they have different mass, is which one will land sooner? Which one will hit the ground sooner? Okay, so in our example, let's say we have a bowling ball and a tennis ball, and we drop them from the same height, which would strike the ground first. Does the mass of an object affect its acceleration due to gravity? These were concepts that Galileo sought to understand through a series of experiments that studied acceleration. He found that the acceleration of an object was constant over time, regardless of its mass. Therefore, a bowling ball and tennis ball would both reach the ground at the same moment. In the absence of air resistance, both should reach the ground at the same time, regardless of their shape. All objects near the surface of the Earth fall with the same, fall with the same acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that is a number you would like to know, the 9.8 meters per second squared.